Hi, and thanks so much for joining me for my February favorites. If you'd like to see that, please keep watching. Starting with an item that I've used in the past, but I've used it really frequently this month because it just perfects foundation even more. So the Chantecaille Anti-Pollution Mattifying Cream. I have enlarged pores in the front here, so it really smooths everything over. Plus, it says it's a shield against toxic urban pollution. And what I also like about this is that it says here that it shrinks the appearance of pores for refined looking skin. And when I add this on before foundation, a really nice foundation looks even better. So you know how I love this Shiseido brush and I always say it makes a good foundation or great foundation even better. This does the same kind of thing. So I've had comments before about how smooth the foundation looks on or how smooth my skin looks. It's typically been because I've been wearing this under foundation. So I do apply it in the T-zone area mostly, just because that's where I get more oily and that's where I have the most texture. And then moving on to this product, the Merit Beauty Complexion Stick, which is neither a concealer nor a foundation, but <laughs> I use it for concealer and foundation. This is such a quick application. I have this on now. I actually have the mattifying cream on under it. I have this. Mine is in the shade Suede. This is definitely something I would repurchase because it's so easy to use. I use it for really, really quick makeup. So when I don't have very much time at all, it's under the eyes, in these areas right here. Sometimes I don't even go on my forehead and I use the brush, the Merit brush, and I think it is the perfect size for this product. Now I do love this, but I don't typically use this under my eyes and I tried it, it doesn't really work well there. However, this product, since I apply it under my eyes and on my face, I just apply and then sweep and then sweep this on. And I have a demo I just filmed the Get Ready With Me if you wanna see this in action and how I use it and why I feel like these two work so well together. Then this is not a new product. In fact, I think it's been in favorites of mine before. It's La Beige Water Fresh Tint by Chanel, but I've had a chance to try out all of the shades. So I did pick two new shades that I want to pick up that I've been loving. So the Medium Plus is a little bit deeper. I don't know where it went, but I will show you a swatch of it, as well as the shade Deep. So I've been looking for one to serve as a bronzer because this really just stays in place and it melts so beautifully. So I have it on now and the shade is Deep. So Medium Plus and Deep and I will compare that also with medium because I was using medium for a while. I've been in the sun just a little bit, but I tan really quickly, so I needed something a little bit more tan, so medium plus is perfect. It has, again, a little bit of a peach tone to it. One of you chimed in said you liked peachier tones because you saw that it brightened as well, and that's why I like it. It does brighten my skin, makes it look a little bit more awake. Also, there's that dewy quality to my skin, and there's nothing like dewy feeling about it, like it's really, like everything has set, but that water fresh tint gives that dewy appearance. Even under foundation and under powder, I have powder as well. Speaking of powder, now this one is difficult to find, but I just kind of rediscovered it. And because I'm getting a little bit more sun, my foundations are looking slightly lighter than my skin tone. So this adds a bit of color, it's number five. This just brings the color back so that it looks more like my skin tone than foundation sitting on my skin because it does have that tendency to do it when it's just slightly lighter. Then this whole Chantecaille Butterfly Collection, these are favorites, so I've used this one quite a bit. This is a very understated palette even though it has shimmer in it, so if you're expecting a lot of color payoff, this is not the palette for you, but if you love more sheer, gentle, like delicate colors. This is so pretty. And the shimmer on this green, I really like it with water applied because it's a much more smooth application. So make sure you go see that video in case you haven't had a chance to see it yet. And then all of the lip cheeks as well. I love all of them. I was surprised that I liked Clover as much as I did on me because it is more cool toned. I really do like this. I think it's such a beautiful shade and not super cool, so I think that's why it works on me. Next shade here is Peach Blossom, which of course I love peach, so I'm gonna love this one. Sometimes I'll combine Clover and Peach Blossom. And then lastly, Hyssop here. It's just like a slightly deeper shade than my natural lip shade, also really beautiful. I love lip cheeks, they're so easy to apply, you don't need a mirror because 
if you go outside the lines a little bit, it's okay because it is a more sheer color, but really hydrating. Update on this Merit um, eyebrow product. I have it on now. It is something that I would wear with a pencil. So in case you saw that video, it is possible to build it up and push it onto the skin in terms of the pigment, but it takes too much time to do that. So I did go in with a pencil and then finish off with this if I in fact do use it because my Chanel eyebrow product, this one right here, I've been loving. It's such a quick eyebrow. I have it on today as well. And sometimes I'll use this, with, use this without brow gel. It does a really good job of filling in quickly. Again, great shade match. And then I just break up the pigment with this. I will show you how it looks without brow gel and with brow gel and then get ready with me that should be coming up in a couple of days. Also the mascara by Merit is very nice. It's like fluttery lashes. I have it on now. So if you like really natural lashes and you're looking for a clean beauty mascara, this is nice. There is some slight transfer though. I did notice every once in a while I see like faint little dots here from transfer. So I wish I didn't do that. Otherwise I would highly, highly recommend it but I recommend it at this point. <laughs> if you wanted to give it a try, I do like the results, but just know you may end up with some. It doesn't happen all the time, so I'm trying to figure out what the common factor is there, but sometimes they will end up with a little bit of transfer. I don't powder under my eyes, so I don't know if that's one of the reasons that might be happening. Speaking of not powdering under the eyes, so I usually use the La Prairie concealer to go in that darkest area here, but I've been using the Chantecaille Le Camouflage Stilo, and I go right in that darkest area right there, and also, it's a great primer for the eyes. It really evens everything out without being too heavy. Sometimes I think primers are too heavy, too sticky, but this one really does just a nice job of evening, evening out that eyelid color because it's a little bit darker on me. And then um, I have it on today under, this may be an all-time favorite. It's the Chanel palette in Tissé Rivoli. Now, every time I wear this, I seem to get questions about it. What am I wearing? And can I do a tutorial? So I've done, I think one like a demo of it because it was my one eye, one cheek, one lip part of that video for Chanel. And I applied it there. I applied it again today. So you'll see that again. So it may be in different degrees of intensity, but it's typically the same application. So make sure to see that video or, or tune into the next video because I will be showing you how I applied it. One of the most beautiful palettes I've ever used. It's so easy to use. It's really easy to blend. And this deepest shade especially is easy to blend because deep shades typically can have the potential to be patchy, um, especially when you're trying to go in light-handedly at first, but this one does such a beautiful job. and. I love the result and I think that any skin tone can wear this. So it's like cooler tones, but I really feel like it doesn't come out across as super cool toned. So I think if you are cool or warm toned, this would be beautiful. And I love the finish here. It's more of like a satin sheen, less of a shimmer. So I think that's why I like it so much. That might be my favorite kind of finish. So I highly, highly recommend that. Then for the other product I used in that, the 64 Pink Explosion I think is gorgeous. I have it on today, but I layered it today because there's such intensity with this, but I'm glad I have a cool toned blush. I usually go with warmer toned blushes, but I think it worked really, really well. Um, and I did wear it with this number 68 <laughs> Rose Ecrine. So I will go ahead and show you that in the demo as well, but that's kind of how I layer things. And then this highlighter that I picked up, I have this on today as well. It's so pretty, it's a soft highlighter. So nothing too beaming, but really just kind of understated and pretty. And I have it in my inner corner as well today. So I would also recommend this in case you were wondering about it. For lip products, oh, just an update on this Merit Beauty. This is the, oh gosh, Tinted Lip Oil in Marrakesh. It's a really beautiful product. So if you are suffering from more dehydrated or chapped lips, this is a nice one, especially for the winter, really comfortable. And this is a gorgeous, gorgeous <laughs> shade, Marrakesh. I love this one. For the quickest eye looks, I do recommend these Chanel items I picked up. This one is in Burgundy Perlet. And then we also have number 40, and this is in Beige Perlet. 
And I think the beige one out of the two is the one I've used the most. Oh gosh, you can see, yes, it's kind of mushed already. I love this for every day. So with that Merit complexion stick, I go in with this really fast and then I put the Merit um, mascara on and then I will put on the Chanel eyebrow and that's almost all of my makeup. I'll use the Marrakesh in the lip oil and then I'll go with the Westman Atelier blush right here. Um, I can't find it, I just had it, but I will, that's kind of my daily right now. So those are lovely, lovely eyeshadow sticks. Oh, and thank you for the tip about the sharpener on the other end. I tried it. I tried to take this out, but I thought I was breaking it, but thank you for letting me know because then I just used a little bit more pressure and was able to remove it. So for those asking how do you sharpen this product, there is a sharpener on the bottom, like the eyeliners. This one, I noticed there's a translucent one, so I might want to pick that up too, but this works really well. It has like that crushed diamond pearl appearance to it, but still really beautiful, nothing too chunky, is to take a blush like this one. You just get some on your fingertips here and then you incorporate it with this balm and then you can use it as a cream blush. So I love it the most for that. So I thought that was a really wonderful idea that a Chanel makeup artist shared with me. And then as for a few Chanel lips that I've been loving, I do really like the 496, <laughs> the 496 Rouge Coco in this one right here. It's a little bit cooler in Tendress. It's a really pretty, kind of a sheer-ish type formula. I mean, it's not super sheer, but it's not as opaque as say the next one I'm going to talk about, but really pretty. I'm glad I picked this one up, one of the newer ones. And then I also love this one. Um, this one's probably my favorite lip right now. It's the Rouge Allure in 192 Profondeur, and it's the one I'm wearing now. It's kind of like a rosier, brownish kind of reddish shade. I can't pinpoint exactly what it is because in here it looks like it's going to be more like a rosewood type of shade, but on my lips it looks like there's a little bit of red too. So I think that's one of the prettiest lipsticks available right now. I do love this. I said I was going to revisit this at the end of the month. The Rouge Allure Lac in 64 Exigence and it's a really pretty, just a pretty lip color. Not too light, not too deep, somewhere in between and just with a little bit of liveliness about it to kind of pick up the entire complexion. So I really like this one, comfortable formula as well. And then for fragrance, I've been loving this Vetiver Cedra by Chantecaille and it has some really beautiful notes to it and I have to get my phone because it's over there. Let me go get it. This has been my daily fragrance. It wasn't until this past year staying at home so much that I really started wearing fragrance and I wear it mostly for me because I like the way it smells. It is just a nice pick me up for the day. So every day I've been wearing some sort of fragrance and this month I've been wearing this one quite a bit. So if you like a clean scent, this is a really beautiful clean one. It's top notes are bergamot, grapefruit, pink pepper, juniper, and nutmeg. Now I don't really pick those up as much as I do the mid notes, which are cedarwood oil, geranium, and iris. And I think that geranium iris gives it a really nice green scent. So nice and fresh, nothing too heavy. And then for the dry down, it says vetiver, patchouli, benzoin, and musk. So I don't really pick up the patchouli, but I pick up more of the vetiver than anything else. It's one of those fragrances that I can't put too much on of for myself, like I don't get overwhelmed by it, but my husband notices when I've put on more than one spray because he'll tell me it smells like a lot. Um, so I do just try to keep this to one, but it smells so nice that I'm happy to spray on more. It is categorized as a men's fragrance. I typically like fragrances that aren't so heavy on the floral side though, which is why I will look at men's fragrances. And this is a favorite of mine, actually of my husband. So I like when he wears this. It's the Oud Fumé. And this is a really unique scent. This might be one of my favorite scents of his that he's worn. And the top notes are bergamot, thyme, rosemary, and fresh hyssop. Mid notes are geranium, ylang ylang, cedarwood, patchouli. And the dry down is albanium, leather, agarwood smoke, sandalwood. And I think I really like that leathery smell in there as well as the agarwood smoke. Those are the things that really come out. So if you are looking for a fragrance for someone in your life and you like those scents, it smells really, really good. So 
I highly recommend this one as well. I really am enjoying fragrance these days and it is in part due to House of Sierge for sending me so many beautiful fragrances to try and then the Chantecaille fragrances I purchased myself is very much learning to appreciate them so I am really getting interested in fragrance so please let me know your I'm gonna say your niche fragrances because I've seen like the bigger names out there, but I love learning about smaller fragrance labels and really unique scents. So leave me your recommendations down below. I'd really appreciate it. But that is it for today's video. So please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.